and I'm trying to get people to get on live, but anyway. Um, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome guys. I'm excited for this team call. I know it's the last day of the month, so I know maybe some people are still pushing to meet those end of the month goals. Um, so, you know, if you need to mute yourself, please do. Um, I'm very excited to have Joan on the call tonight. We um, agreed to exchange calls after we saw a post in one of the leadership groups for both of us kind of looking to do call exchanges. Um, and I think I kind of hit the jackpot. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. I'm actually going to pin your video, girl. Okay, there you go. Um, so um, Joan is a 10 star diamond, two time elite coach, success club 10 legend. She has been in the business 33 months, but it might be 34 now because I think this was last month's stats. Um, <laughs> And she's been in Success Club all 33 of those months. And this is like the most impressive to me is that she quit her full-time job after six months in the business. So that's amazing. If you, I mean, I've been in the business 26 months and I am still working my full-time job. So um, she's going to talk tonight about mindset. And I called this call Mindset Matters. And it actually I set it up well before I had this accident, but I feel like it's pretty um, pertinent to what I'm going through and it's going to help me and also help you guys. So I'm getting my pen and paper right now. I hope you guys do the same and um, I will let you take it away. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you for that introduction. I'm super happy to be on your call. Like, I feel like, you know, to teach is to learn. And like every time you do these sorts of things, it just fills your cup more too. So um, I love doing it and being here for you guys. Um, I'm going to start just telling you a little bit about my story and my background so that you know who I am and what I went through and why you should even be listening to me whatsoever. Um, so I will start with, we're talking about mindset, right? And when I started... I was not in the right mindset. In fact, I said that I would never be a coach. I actually said mm -hmm. that um, not only would I never be a coach, but that I didn't really support my husband in being a coach. So I'm one of those weirdos who my husband actually signed up to coach before I did, and I was a hater. I would sit on the couch and complain that he was on team calls at night and wonder why he wasn't sitting there watching the Kardashians with me and, you know, we should be spending time together. But of course that time was sitting in front of the TV doing nothing every single night and, you know, crashing at 10 PM. So I, I really was, um, <laughs> skeptical to say the least. And that all comes from the fact that when Ryan and I started dating, um, We've been together for 12 years now. When we started dating, Ryan wanted to do a business that was another multi-level marketing company. And I fought him on that too, but eventually gave in and did it because we were newly dating and he was really excited about it. So I was like, fine, I'll do this with you. And I had a really bad taste in my mouth. You weren't allowed to use social media um, within this business. On top of that, you know, just the, the old tactics of um, network marketing where you're like supposed to be standing in line you know, at a grocery store or getting coffee and then have like some weird, awkward talk with somebody and ask them if they've, you know, been open to new business activities. Um, and I felt like, I felt like we were constantly like hunting down our friends and, and annoying people and people thought we just wanted them to, you know, buy things from us and, and be salesy and, and all of that stuff. So really bad taste in my mouth. And after doing it with them for about six months, I think our biggest paycheck was $13. And I was like, I am done. This is, this is killing me. Um, but the one and only thing out of that, and this is something I actually don't usually share with people on team calls. The one and only thing that I received from that business was personal development. And I will tell you that they had like this book of the month club. And so I read at least, at least one book every single month. And that helped me for future endeavors. And it helped me today too. Um, so I will say that, that coming out of it, that was the one positive. So fast forward a bit and, you know, I've always been kind of a, an emotional eater. Um, I've always, you know, really been somebody who pretends like I'm super happy on the outside and super confident, but on the inside have always been a little bit 
nervous and scared to be alone because if I was alone, I always went to like a very dark place. I would always start thinking about, um, you know, death. I would start thinking about things that scared me, like the world ending and things of that nature, right? So that, uh, when I was alone, I wasn't in my happy place. Um, and fast forward to 2009, um, that unhappy thing that I always worried about actually came true. And I received a phone call that my dad had taken his own life. Um, and in the crux of, you know, in the middle of my little sister had just given birth to his, his first granddaughter two weeks before, and he was supposed to walk my other sister down the aisle two weeks later. So it was a time that was supposed to be happy, but was just clouded with a bunch of darkness. And of course, my worst nightmare and that fear had come true. And I went into a very deep depression. I then was um, laid off from my job. <laughs> That's, that's fun. Um, laid off from my job because I was taking too much time off because I mentally couldn't get my shit together. Sorry if you don't swear on your calls. I'm just going to give you like the like parent warning here. I swear by accident a lot. Um, and then my grandmother went into the hospital um, and was in the ICU for six months. Which her mesenteric artery had a graft and there's all this stuff. And, and so she went into the hospital. So needless to say, it was a very, very low point in my life. And I was searching for something to make me happy and something to get me out of it. And um, I knew that I was gaining weight during that time. So I ordered something called Turbo Fire and I started doing it, but I never really stuck to it. And the only reason I was really doing it is because Ryan and I were supposed to get married and I didn't want to be fat in my wedding dress. Right. So that was my motivation. But when it, we, when we dug into it, there was still all that depression happening and that emotional eating happening. So it didn't matter how much I worked out, nothing was going to change that until I changed this. And so, um, you know, fast forward, we got married. Um, I had lost a little bit of weight, but not nearly as much as I had wanted to. He, on the other hand, looked fantastic. He was doing P90X at home. And apparently he was in some groups on Facebook that I didn't even know he was part of doing P90X with other people. Chris Reed, I don't know if you all know him being one of those people. And so, um, they had been chatting and, and Chris had actually at this time. So this is 2010, right, right before the wedding, had asked him if he'd ever considered coaching. And Ryan was like, I don't even know what that is. And Chris never said a word after that. He never got back to him. So I'm sitting at my desk, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pushing this story forward because I want to get there for you guys. But I'm sitting at my desk, and it's 2013, and Ryan is laid off from his job, and I'm still chubby, and <laughs> I'm following Janelle Summers on Facebook because Janelle was in the Turbo Fire videos, right? So I was like, I want to see what she's eating. I want to see what she's doing. How does she have those incredible legs? Like, I want that. So I started following her. And she posted that one of her coaches went emerald in her business. And I was like, what the heck is she doing? Like a multi-level marketing business? Like, what is she doing? And I knew he was home searching for jobs. So I messaged him and I was like, Hey, what is this thing that Janelle Summers is talking about on Facebook? Like her, her coach went emerald or whatever. And that day he contacted Chris Reed, remembering that Chris had messaged him three years previous, asking him if he wanted to coach and said, Hey, I think I know what this coaching thing is about. And I want in. And he signed up that day. And so I got home from work. He tells me he just signed up to be a coach. I'm like, Oh, good for you. I'm never doing one of those multi-level marketing things ever again. And on top of that, I was overweight. So I was like, who would ever want me to coach them? You know, like I can't even take care of myself. Why would anybody else want me to be their coach? I was totally afraid of what other people would think of me. I was so afraid of, you know, coming off salesy and all of that stuff that like, I just didn't want to get involved with it ever again. And Ryan signed up his brother-in-law as his first coach. And within Four weeks of his brother-in-law signing up and doing T25 and Shakeology together, his doctor told him he could go off his blood pressure medication. And I know Shakeology doesn't, you know, cure or whatever, yada, yada, yada. But it was because of that. It really was. And so Ryan was like, okay, I know P90X is amazing and I'm loving it and it's helped me. I know that it just helped my brother-in-law. Like, I'm ready to move this thing forward. I'm going to go and I'm going to do this. 
And so he was talking to Chris and Chris was like, yep, so sign your wife. And that's when I was like, mm -mm, I already told you I'm not doing this. And he goes, well, you kind of said you wanted the insanity program anyways. And you know, like you can just do the program. You don't have to do anything else. And I was like, okay. Like I had seen some friends doing insanity online and I had asked them, I said, if, is that something that I can do? <clears throat> Cause at that point I was still searching for something to help me lose the weight and to help me be happier. And they said, if you do this and you do it to a T or like when you need to take a break, you just take a quick one and jump back in without a doubt, you will be in the best shape of your life. So when Ryan said that I just needed to sign up with a program and I didn't have to do anything, I was like, okay. And I remember sitting there at the lake. Um, we were at our lake house and I had my laptop in front of me and he's walking me through how to do it. And he had me select off the coach tab first. And I was like, no, 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 no. I told you that I just would purchase a program. And he was like, no, you're signing up as a coach because it's going to help me. You don't have to do anything. So I filled it all out. I ordered my challenge pack and I literally remember slapping the laptop shut and looking at him and going, are you happy? And walking out of the room. I was pissed. Okay. Hater, hater. So I get my program. This is like the last week or so of July in 2013. I started my program. I did the workout every single day. I did my Shakeology every single day. I marked off every day on that 60 day calendar. I X'd it out every single day. And eventually it became a psychological thing. It was like, I already have like 15 of those things X'd off. I don't want to miss one of them. So I, I guess I better pop it in and do it, you know? And I finished the program and I lost 30 pounds in 60 days, 30 pounds in 60 days. And I lost 27 inches off my entire body. And the thing is, and it's the thing that's the biggest thing is this shifted, this shifted because insanity was so difficult that it pushed me so hard that in the middle of my workout, I would want to cry. I would either want to cry or give up. And there were moments where I would even say it out loud. I'm either going to cry right now or I'm going to quit. And Ryan would say, well, don't do both. And so I would just cry and I would get through my workout. And so I had that, that all of a sudden, like that belief in myself that like I could do whatever I put my mind to. Like this program is so freaking hard. It's called insanity and most people won't even dare try it. And here's me five, seven starting it at 197 pounds, you know, and going for it every single day. And, I, and, and so with that, it was a spiritual change. It wasn't just a physical change. It was a spiritual change, a mental change, emotional change all at once. And because of that, it also opened me up to other things. I'm a big believer that like when your energy changes, then you start attracting goodness around you, right? When you're experiencing joy, you become a magnet for other people who want to experience joy. And I was sitting at a campfire talking about insanity, talking about my dad, talking about the things that I had just been through. And I just so happened to be sitting next to somebody that I didn't even know was a spiritual leader and like, you know, self-help guru online. <laughs> and so we had this amazing conversation and I started talking to him about everything. And then we became friends on social media. And then I noticed that he interviewed somebody named Gabrielle Bernstein. And if you guys don't know who she is, you need her books, go get her books. Um, because her entire, her entire message is getting you out of fear and getting you to live the life that you were put here to live. And so I saw her, I saw Jordan, my friend interview her, and then I started following her and I got her books. And so all of this stuff started happening at once. Insanity opened me up. I started reading the personal development, my, like my emotional game, my mindset, everything changed at once. And so at the end of all that, I looked at Ryan and I said, I get it. I get it. You change. You feel good. You feel more confident. You're happier. You have more energy and people start noticing that, you know, it's not about selling some piece of crap to somebody. It is literally changing somebody's life. And if I could help one person, one person feel as good as I did then after going through all the bullshit that I had just gone through in my life and I felt amazing, then it would be completely worth it.
So I got on the phone with Chris and I told him, hey, I will do whatever you tell me to do. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And for the next six months, I did whatever Chris told me to do. And that doesn't mean it was always easy. There were things he told me to do that I didn't feel comfortable doing. There were things like, oh, you know, um, you need to talk to every single person you've ever met. You need to tell every single person you've ever known that you're doing this business and ask them if they want to do it with you. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, why would I want to do that? I was like, that's like the salesy crap that I didn't want part of before. And he was like, well, you said I'd, you'd do anything that it took to be successful, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, and you said that if you could help somebody else and it would be worth it, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, how are you going to help somebody if you're not telling anybody what you're doing? And I was like, mm. you know, and that goes with that whole thing that's like, don't hold somebody else's future captive in your own mouth. You know, don't decide for them just because you're scared of potentially getting a no. You know, who gives a crap if they say no? Can I tell you how many people I have written down in this notebook over here that told me no? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times. I had somebody I signed the other day that I've been talking to for two years. You know? It's not you. It's not about you. It's about them. So I asked Gabby. So I told you guys all that my friend Jordan was friends with her and I started reading her books and stuff. And Chris was telling me to do things I didn't want to do. So I messaged her and I said, what do you do when you know you have something that can completely change somebody else's life? It can, can, it can help them in all aspects. It can give them more time with their families, more freedom, more, you know, better finances. It can get them healthier, make them live longer, but you're fearful of coming off salesy. And she said this advice, and I want you to write this down. She said, be unapologetic about the service behind this business. Be unapologetic about the service behind this business and everything else will fall into place. And so that's what I did every single day before I sat down to do the thing that made me feel the most uncomfortable in the world, which was starting conversations with people so that I could eventually get to the point where maybe I was inviting them to a challenge group or coaching. I would sit there and tell myself, I am offering them something amazing. I am offering them a chance to get out of debt. I am offering them peace of mind. I am offering them the chance to get out of a stressful situation. I'm offering them more freedom and time with their family. I am allowing them to have the same thing that I have been given. Okay? So remind yourself of that before you sit down. And if you approach every single conversation with that in mind, with that thought of, I am here to help somebody and I'm just offering it. If they don't take it, it's not because they don't like me. It's not because they hate me. It's not because I'm being salesy. It's because it's not the right time for them yet. Just like it wasn't the right time for me quite yet when Ryan forced me to do it, right? I said I would never coach, but after I went through some changes, my mindset shifted and then I was ready. So remember that. Okay. So that is my story. And I don't know if you guys can relate to any of it, um, but that's part of the thing also that I wanted to talk to you guys about is that, you know, I told you my story because it is going to flow into like that mindset piece. And I know I already talked a little bit about the mindset behind it, but that's all we're doing, right? Like we're not being salesy. And I think that a lot of the times why people are fearful to reach out or fearful to post or fearful to do those things is because they think that they have to go make up something and go post it online and be salesy and try to like, you know, sell something and attract these people. But all you have to do is be you and share what you're doing. That's all you have to do is share you and your journey on Facebook or on social, like any social media platform that's out there every single day. That's all you have to do to attract the people to you that you want. Okay. And know that you're always speaking to you before Beachbody, right? So you're always speaking to the you before Beachbody. What were your struggles? What was your mindset? What did you go through on a daily basis that you didn't like, that you wanted to change, that you wanted to fix? How do you feel better now because of Beachbody? Any aspect of it. And then that's the things that you post about to attract the people that you like that, that, that are going to know, like, and trust you and that are going to become the best people on your team. And so let's talk a little second about how we get in that right mindset. So number one, and it might sound cliche, but as you can tell with my journey, the workout is everything, you guys. It is everything. If I had not started Insanity, my mindset would not have shifted. 
my health wouldn't have shifted and I would not have that belief in myself, in the products that I could go ahead and help somebody else feel as good as I did. So make sure that you are getting your workout in every single day and talking about your journey with it every single day. If you didn't want to press play today, why didn't you want to press play? Talk about it on Facebook. If it was a struggle for you today, why was it a struggle? If something was freaking amazing today, why was it amazing? You know, don't just be like, another sweaty selfie, workout in. That does jack for anyone. It annoys the crap out of me seeing those posts. So I'm sure it annoys the crap out of your audience too. Okay. Second. Second tip for getting into the right mindset. Personal development. Every single day. And I recommend getting, finding something that really, really, really resonates with you and talks about what you need to fix. And I will just give you my opinion. I feel like people who are not the most successful in this business or the people who aren't achieving what they want to in this business, it is not a lack of know-how. It is not a lack of resources. It is not a lack of, um, ability, smarts, anything like that. It is fear. It is 100% fear. And so for me and my team, my team does very well with this too. We are all little Gabby disciples. I highly recommend starting to read Gabrielle Bernstein. She has a book called May Cause Miracles. It's a 40-day guidebook. You can go through the 40 days of that while you're still reading other personal development, right? Because it's not going to take up all your time. So I highly recommend that. Um, the other book that I think is incredible personal development wise is the miracle morning. And I don't know how many of you have read that or if any of you have read that when I started reading that, I realized I had this like, Oh, aha, that's why I was so successful. Those, you know, that first year, those first six months, I was doing all the stuff he tells you to do. I was waking up every single morning and doing my personal development. I was meditating every single day. I was saying words of affirmation. I was journaling what I was grateful for. I was doing my workout every single day. You know, everything that he talks about in the miracle morning were things that I was doing every single day and weirdly, not weirdly, part of your vital behaviors. <laughs> so, you know, they're called vital for a reason. And I know it always sounds cliche because you always have these leaders come on the calls or you have these leaders at summit and they all say like, do your personal development. It's so important. Do your vital behaviors. It's so important. And it's because it is like, there really is no secret sauce to you guys. It is just doing the work. But like I said, until you have this right, none of it works, right? So find something that works for you within your personal development. The Miracle Morning and Make Up Miracles are two of my favorites. Um, anything by Gabby, really, though, like Spirit Junkie really resonated with me. That's another book of hers. Or add more ink to your life. Um, but it's going to teach you how to get over those fears that you're having and realize how to stop listening to that voice and start actually listening to your inner guide. Okay. Number three, I already said to you guys but that was being unapologetic about the service behind this business. If you sit down to the computer and you start messaging people and every single person starts saying, no, not right now, yada, 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 you're doing something wrong. It's you. It's you. So back up from the computer. I don't care if you go do a little dance, do some jumping jacks, read a little personal development, listening to something for a minute, but go and change your head. And then go back in and remind yourself that you're doing this to help people not to sell. And the responses will change. So that is number three. Be unapologetic about the service behind your business and remember that before you go into your conversations every single day. Okay, number four, and this might sound heady, but meditation and prayer. I don't know if you're spiritual. I don't know if you're Christian. I don't care. This is what worked for me. Every single night, every single night, before I went to bed, I said a prayer, and it comes from the knowing equation in the Admore Ing book by Gabby. And it was, okay, so my first year as a coach, my goal was to be elite, and my goal was to be five-star. I ended the year as six-star elite. And this is what I said to myself every night before I went to bed. This year, I will be a five-star diamond elite coach. And my desire is for the greater good because, and then I would list off the reasons why it was for the greater good. Right there, every single night was that positive affirmation and that prayer to the universe that said, this is what I want and this is why it should happen. 
right? And then I went into a meditation. And the meditation was also in that chapter. So you can look it up. It's a guided meditation. It's called the white light meditation. And in that meditation, I would sit and I would think to myself and I would envision myself walking across stage as a lead. I would envision myself talking on stage stages and light pouring off me onto the crowd. I envisioned what I wanted every single night before I went to bed. So meditation and prayer, they're super, super powerful. You guys, meditation is known to reduce stress. Stress is something that if you get rid of, you're going to have more joy. If you have more joy, you're going to become a magnet for miracles and people and your business is going to grow. So do it. All right. Five blinders, put your blinders on. Stop comparing. In my second year of my business, I did not grow as fast. I ended the year lead again, but I ended the year at eight star. So the first year I went six star and the second year I only grew by two stars, right? And the reason was is because I started paying attention to what other people were doing. I started looking at what the top coaches were posting. I started looking at all that stuff. I started comparing myself to other people and being like, oh, I should be doing these systems and I should be running these groups and I should be doing these, you know, whatevers. And Amy Silverman looked at me in Cancun and she said, don't forget the things that you were doing in the beginning to get to where you are now. Because what works for somebody else doesn't work for you. And so I had to get out of my own head and I had to remember that what I was doing was awesome and get back to the things that worked best for me. And so my last tip for you, number six, is what do you do if you lose momentum? And that is you just put one foot in front of the other every single day. You wake up and you eat that frog. You do the thing that you want to do least first. And you continue those behaviors every single day and motion creates motion, right? So motion is going to create that momentum back for you and stop focusing about what you don't have and what you don't want and start focusing on what you do have and what you do want because what you focus on grows. So the universe doesn't know the difference, right? It doesn't know the difference between a good thought and a bad thought. All it knows is that it's co-creating with you and it wants whatever you are focusing on to happen. So control your thoughts and control your actions by moving forward. Your brain will start moving forward and start thinking about what you do have to create more of what you want. And so there was a little story that my mom told me about John Daly. He's actually a golfer. And he was saying that he was having the best round of his entire career. And in the middle of the round, he noticed a friend in the crowd and he stopped to go talk to him. He took his eye off the ball. He took his eye off his game. He took his concentration and his focus off the game. And he started looking over here and talking to him. And when he went back, his game sucked. It sucked and he never got his motivation back the rest of the round. So. When you're in that mode, when you find yourself in a good headspace, continue doing what you are doing with laser focus and do not let anyone throw you off your game. And that's all I have for you tonight. Um, I think it was about 30 minutes. I hope that was good. Do you guys have questions? I can definitely stick around for a while and answer any questions you have. That was amazing. Um, and I think it's what a lot of us, including myself, needed to hear. I think you know, you get no's and you get frustrated and sad and you begin to think it's you. And like you said, like, it's just not the right time. I have it happen to me all the time too. Like I, I make up in people's mind that they're going to say no. So funny you said that you're like, don't make it up that they're going to say no, like ask them. And, and I had people come to me and say like, I don't know why you've never – like, I had a friend of mine say, like, I don't know why you've never asked me to coach. Do you think I'd be a bad coach? And I'm like, no, I just had it in my head you'd say no. But I didn't say that. But I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, my God, I'm such an idiot, you know? Yeah. So I thought that was awesome and really, really, really helpful. And I think a lot of us can attest to the fact that we don't ask people and we see them sign up with someone else or we, like, see them pass us by and we, like, want to, you know, kick ourselves because we're, like – why the heck didn't we ask? So I thought that was amazing. And I, you guys, if you have questions, please unmute yourself and, and ask them. I'll let you guys go ahead. Does anyone have anything they want to ask? I do. Okay. Oh. Um, can you write in the chat box the name of the Arthur, Arthur that you were talking about? I couldn't understand you. I was in the, I'm in the car right now. Yeah. 
Her name is Gabrielle Bernstein. I just typed it in there. Here, I'll put the books too. Thank you. You're welcome. She actually has a new book coming out too called The Universe Has Your Back. Um, if any of you are in the Massachusetts area, she is actually doing um, a talk at the Natural Living Expo on November 12th, I think it is. You'd have to look it up. I think that's the date. We're actually going down there. Like a big group of my of us um, for my team are going down there. We go every time she's there. She wasn't there last year, but she was there the, the two previous years too. Where is um, it? It's at the Natural Living Expo. And that's in like, where is that? Is that like Marlboro Mass or something like that? Okay. Friends looking it up. Okay. Cool. Um, and the other book I mentioned was um, November twelfth, thirteenth. Yeah. Um, Marlboro Mass. The Miracle Morning. And that's by Hal Elrod. So there's that for you too. But you can even go on YouTube. Gabby's got some free talks on there. Um, she's got some free lectures on Spotify, too, that you can tune into. Her website is gabbyb.tv, um, and she puts up a video blog every single week. So she definitely has a ton of content, so you can even check her out there, too. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else? Kind of a question that might be a little off topic, but um, um, do you have any conversations or YouTubes or whatever that you've talked about you going from going into full time in six months? So I don't really have any videos about that. Actually, if you go to my YouTube page, there is one team call that was called like, um, what was it called? It was like the secret, my secret of like success or something like that something dweeby like that, but, um, you can go look at that one. And it really like, even within that, it tells you like the schedule that I did every single day. But I will tell you that, um, I was, uh, since I was a hater who Ryan never thought was going to build, he put me on his inside leg and I was, and, and Ryan was actually on Chris's inside leg. So I have never had a power leg. All the volume underneath me is completed is, 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 um, created by myself and the people that I've added there. Ryan, I think has added four people under me the entire time I've been in this business because I flipped his leg so quickly that he has to work on the other side. And Chris's leg got flipped so quickly that he had to work on the other side as well. So all the volume there was created by me. So first off, I'm just going to say that if you were put in a dead leg or you don't have a sponsor or you have any of that stuff, or you have a zero volume right now, and you keep telling yourself you can't leave your job in six months, that's a bunch of bull because you can. But two, it takes work and it takes hustle and it takes sacrifice. I sacrificed sleep. I sacrificed um, happy hour. I sacrificed um, TV time. There were times where people would invite me to go away for the weekend and I knew that the place that we were going wasn't going to have good Wi-Fi. So I was like, nope, not going to go. You know. But when I look back now, I'm like, was that a sacrifice to live the way I do now? Absolutely not. You know, and when I say six months in, I matched my salary and I left. It wasn't like six months in, I matched my, and I'll just tell you, I was making 50 grand a year. So it wasn't like, oh, six months in, I'm making $50,000 a year. But it was six months in, my paychecks each week were matching the paychecks that I was taking home at that point consistently. So I was like, okay, peace. You know, and at that point too, six months in, I'd already, I'd, I'd reached five star. So, um, at five star, you know, I was like, okay, now I have all of these moving pieces and this is something that you'll gather. I don't know where you are in the business right now, but as you move forward, you realize like, wow, there's so much more stuff to do than just like talk to people and make success good points once you have a team. <laughs> um, so like there were things that were happening and moving pieces that I, you know, I was stressed about. So I was like, if I'm making, if I'm matching paycheck to paycheck, and it's only been six months and, you know, <laughs> I've only made this after years of schooling and working in places for a while. Like, what could I do if I put all my time here? So that's what I did. But I also, like, I'll give you my schedule. I woke up every morning. I'm not a morning person. I'm still not a morning person. Sorry. And I don't have children. So when I do the miracle morning, it can start when I wake up. <laughs> so 
So um, I don't have to set my alarm for like 5 a.m. or anything like that. But um, I would wake up typically around 8 a.m. I would make my Shakeology. I would listen to my PD in the car on my way to work. I would get to work. And granted, I worked in social media and SEO. So I was allowed to be on those things during the day. So there were a lot of times where I was checking in and starting conversations when I had downtime. Obviously not if I was like in a meeting or something like that, or I had like a deadline for a project that I was doing, but, um, I would check in on my lunch hour. So instead of going and messing around for an hour with my, you know, with my coworkers in the conference room, eating our lunch in there, I would sit at my desk and I would follow up and I would start conversations and I would post to Facebook. Um, and then I would usually check into before I left my, my job and I would put a post up before I left the office so that when I got home, I could quickly do my workout, eat my dinner, and by the time I sat down, I had people who had liked my challenge group post, or I had people who had liked my post that I'd put up. And then from that moment on until about 1 or 2 a.m., I would work my business, and I did the same thing every day. And then Saturdays, I would wake up and I would work my business. And I'll tell you, Saturday mornings are fantastic for working your business. Um, I always sign people Saturday mornings, always. Um, and then by, you know, it hit like noon on a Saturday and Ryan and I would do our workout and then we'd go do something fun because that's what everybody else in the world is doing too. I'm not going to sign any challenge packs on a Saturday night. And then Sunday we would do our own thing most of the day. And then by Sunday night I was back working my business. Um, I also always did general challenge groups because I didn't want to spread myself too thin by doing multiple challenge groups. Um, so by having a general one going all the time, I always had something to add somebody to, whether they signed up on the 1st, the 12th, the 30th, it didn't matter. They went right into that group and there was always support and motivation in there for them. So I found ways like that to save my time. Um, I never missed a team call. I never missed a super Saturday. When my mom's boyfriend died, I had to fly down to Florida unexpectedly. I was still on the team call that Monday night. When I was on vacation in Hawaii, I was still on the team call that Monday night. When Ryan and I flew into New York City to go to a concert, we left the airport at 6 a.m. <laughs> so that we could get to New York in time to go to the super Saturday that was in Brooklyn and then head over to where we needed to be. Um, so events are super important. I've never missed an event. I've never missed a team call. Um, I wasn't actually set up with training groups and stuff like that. I actually had to ask what a challenge group was when I first started. I didn't know what that was. Um, and I never was given templates or anything like that. So um, I had no volume. I had no templates. I had no systems. I had none of that. But what I did have was a lot of resourcefulness and a lot of hustle. And I use that to my advantage. So those times where you're sitting there and you're going, I don't want to do this. I'm too tired. I just worked all day. My kids are driving me nuts, yada, 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 whatever that is. Stop telling yourself that and get to work. And the other thing is, I'll tell you this, there were so many nights where I would come home and I would just be exhausted because I had been going, 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 going for a bit, right? It's worth it, you guys, but you do. You kind of have to hustle for a bit. And I would look at Ryan and be like, I'm so tired, but I'm supposed to jump on this training call with this person and yada, yada, yada. And then I would like hem and haw and I would get up and I'd go turn my computer on and I would go get on the training call and I would be completely energized at the end of it. Completely energized, pumped, ready to go, reaching out to new people because spirit works through people, you guys. And so you will be given everything that you need to when you're taking that spiritually aligned action to get to where you want to. So yeah, that's how I did it in six months. I just hustled, hustled, sacrificed and worked my ass off. Does anyone have anything else at all? This was kind of amazing. I love your energy. I appreciate you taking the time with us. It's been awesome. Um, yeah, and I know a lot of, I like randomly started talking to a lot of people at the, the Boston Area Market Council that know you and love you and said this call oh. was going to be amazing, and it was. They were right, so... <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me, you guys. Yeah. Anyone have anything before we sign off? No? All right. Okay, I'll post the recording in the group in a little bit. Thank you again. I'm yeah. sure we'll that soon. And um, everyone have a wonderful night. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.